In today's video, I'm gonna be telling you everything that you need to know about the new Brexit trade deal and how that is gonna affect you as an importer or exporter of goods in and out of the UK. I'll also be talking about the postponed VAT reporting scheme, which is gonna really help with your cash flow. So if you're interested in this sort of content, make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on. Let's get into the video straight away. Welcome if you're new here, welcome back if you're not. My name is Johnny Bradley, I'm founder of the Seller Pro Academy, where we help ordinary people create extraordinary things, just one product at a time. Now, let's talk about Brexit. Now, for the past few years, it's kind of felt like a tooth that just will not come loose. And at every point, there's just been upset, uncertainty, fear, and everyone, including politicians, not really knowing what's going on. And of course, the news outlets are just kind of regurgitating what the politicians are saying, and then we the people are left thinking, I have no idea what's gonna happen. But fortunately, we now know what has happened. And that's because of course, Boris, the old human scarecrow himself, has finally come to a deal with EU. And the great thing is that he gave us so much time to be able to prepare for this. He left it literally just a few days over Christmas and New Year's when most companies aren't even working anyway. Maybe it was a negotiations tactic, who knows. However, finally we have some clarity about how we can operate going forward. So um, let's get into that right now. So currently when I'm recording this video, there's quite a lot of delays at the border. And that is because lots of companies are having to change the way that they're declaring their goods or the information that they are declaring to customs. Now, because businesses had only a few days to be able to actually make these changes or actually understand the changes and how it's gonna impact their businesses, of course, there are ginormous delays at the UK border. M&S, Marks and Sparks, said that the new trade agreements were creating very complex administrative processes. And when you're operating at that scale that they do, you know, you can't just get an intern to do this sort of stuff. It is quite complex. And kindly, a government spokesperson said that there were some issues, but ministers had always been clear that there'd be some disruption at the end of the transition period. Maybe, maybe, I don't know about this, there wouldn't be quite as much disruption if people have been given maybe a few extra days notice, maybe a couple months notice, a year's notice. And of course, if it wasn't bad enough, let's just throw in some COVID delays with that as well. Just, you know, just for fun. Even DPD are pausing their European road network because they're just like, this is this is a cluster. F I think they said around 20% of their packages or their consignments have errors, which means they have to be returned to the sender, which of course is causing a massive financial burden and administrative burden. So in an effort to help you understand how this can or may affect you, then I've tried to make it as simple as possible for this video. And if you feel that I've not done that, let me know with a nice thumbs down button or a comment saying that I'm rubbish. So the first thing I wanna talk about is importers. So I import goods into the UK. I don't import them from Europe. I import them from places like China, but nevertheless, I still import to the UK. However, if you are importing from a European Union country, then there are some extra things that you're gonna have to do. The first thing is that importers are gonna need to state on their customs you know, documents and, and uh, declarations, the country of origin. Now, this isn't necessarily something new. This is something that you could disclose or sometimes are required to disclose. But in this case, now it's happening, everyone is required to disclose this information. Along with that, of course, you have to have the classifications, commodity code, the value of the goods, and everything else you would normally need to import goods into the EU. So my example of sourcing from China is pretty much not affected. I still import goods into the UK. Um, I would still put the country of origin. I would still put the classification. I would still put the value of the goods. Pretty much nothing changes at that point, except for the way that customs duty and VAT is paid, which I'll get onto a little bit later. Also later on in the video, I will let you know what to do if you're a bit confused about all of this and how it's gonna impact your business. Now, because the country of origin wasn't always required, of course, so there's going to be some times where it's gonna cause logistical issues or paperwork issues for these companies that are doing you know, huge amounts of SKUs, huge amounts of turnover of business. This could be quite an issue for them. And this is the issue that people like Marks and Spencer are having and DPD by things being classified incorrectly or not being classified at all. However, in regards to imports from the EU, it will actually be possible to defer customs declarations for up to six months. This isn't on all goods, so you will have to check that but on some goods, standard goods, you actually be able to defer this for up to six months, which also means you'll be able to defer the payment of customs duty, which is something that's very, very good for your cash flow. This means that you're gonna have this money set aside or originally set aside that you can use to buy more stock, do more marketing, 
give to yourself or do whatever you want to do with it. You can funnel that money back into your business if you really want to, or of course you can put it aside for when your bill does come. And of course the benefit of this is if you have your goods turn up into the UK and then you sell those products within that six month period, you didn't actually have to pay that customs duty charge at the point of the goods entering the country. I think this is incredible. This is a really, really good scheme. And I think this is one of the best things that, that has happened because of Brexit. However, there is actually something that is better and that's with regards to VAT. Personally speaking, I'm not a fan of value added tax or, or, or any tax for that matter. And if it was at all possible, I'd rather not pay it, right? When I was learning about this, looking at the customs declarations and how you can delay it for six months, I was thinking that's incredible, but what's gonna happen with VAT? Wouldn't it be great if you could defer your VAT payment for importing goods into the country? So I'm gonna start reading off some jargon right now because I wanna make sure I get this correct. So if you're a VAT registered business and you're importing goods into the UK, you're gonna be able to benefit from postponed VAT accounting scheme. I got that right. Now this is exactly what it means. Okay, the postponed VAT accounting system aims to avoid the negative cash flow impact on businesses that are hit by an additional VAT bill and will avoid having goods held in customs until the VAT is paid. So basically what this is saying is that usually what would happen is if you import goods into the UK, you'd pay your VAT, they might get released from customs and you get your products. What they're saying is that your goods will be able to be released from customs as long as you agree to pay the VAT later. The best way to understand how this works is if you've ever used reverse charge VAT. And what that means is rather than paying the import VAT uh, when you actually import the goods and then reclaiming it on your VAT return, the VAT is accounted for in input and output on the same VAT return. And all this means is as the importer, you don't have to pay your VAT up front, which again means better cash flow and it means that you're able to try and recoup that money from your sales to then pay any, any VAT or any bills or any duties that you have left to pay after you've actually sold the products if you turn them around fast enough. Now there's something really important. Now this is not mandatory unless you're deferring your customs declarations by that six month period. If you're deferring your customs declarations, then you're gonna also need to defer your VAT permits as well using this postponement scheme. The best thing to do is if this is gonna affect you, make sure you go and speak to your accountant as soon as possible to see how you can leverage it in your business. Next thing we're talking about is safety declarations. So of course some products may be harmful or have safety issues, or they may have some sort of safety element where you need to provide a declaration for that or a certificate or whatever it may be to UK Customs. If you're exporting goods at the moment, then actually you would have had to implement that back on the 1st of January, but for imports, it's actually starting on the 1st of July, 2021. So you have a little bit of time to be able to make sure that you understand the rules and what is required of you. Now for the rest of the world, all those people that aren't in the EU, and if you're importing or exporting goods to those countries, it's pretty much the same. But of course, there may be some differences depending on everyone's different circumstances. So what I wanna do is give you the best bit of advice I can possibly give you. Because at the end of the day, this. May May all seem very confusing and you're not going to get all the information you need just from one video that's you know 10 minutes long you need to do a bit of research however there's other people that have probably done the research already and are going to be better at understanding that research and that is a freight forwarder they're professionals and they understand the import and exports of goods into your country and many other countries around the world so if you want to find out how brexit and how the new trade deal has affected you then reach out with a freight forwarder and if you don't have a freight forwarder just go down into the description where I have a recommendation for a fantastic company that know exactly how to deal with all of these things. And if you want to learn how I import goods in bulk from China and then sell individually on Amazon, just go down to the description again. There's going to be a link for some free training. You can check it out and learn a little bit more about what I do. If you have any questions, please feel free to ping them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you're following on socials at Johnny Bradley UK on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on. And remember, you're just one product away. Bye bye.